this computer. Now it's we are also recording. Perfect. Um, hello, everyone. And apologies once again for our tech difficulties because uh, I was unable to live stream on the link I gave you all before. But uh, Matt, maybe we should share on our. Sorry, cannot do that. Okay. Share on our um, okay groups, and then we get started. What are we talking about today, anyways? The root cause. <laughs> I love yeah. it. That's right. What are we talking about? The root cause. All this cause. tech stuff. Takes the fun out of everything. I know. Once this Gosh. thing blows up, we're going to have a tech person. I know. Because this we is not to. our strength. We definitely need a tech person. So I think I was able to share to my um, group, but not on my page. Yeah, I don't see it over here. I don't, don't see it on, it on my, my timeline. It's just on your end. On my, you will have to go on my timeline. Let me see if I can okay, let me tag see. you. Guys, sorry about all this. And I'm even recording this mess here. All right, there you are. You found me? Okay, so yeah, that's the one right. you have to share because the link I had originally, again, I wasn't able to stream start, to that link. I'm going to start, start the watch that. party. And I'm going to start one also on a page, like meaning my page. All right, there you are. And you found me? Okay, yeah, that's the right. one you have to share because the link I had originally, again, I wasn't able to. Okay, are we ready to start? start that link. I'm going to start, start to watch more. Uh, mm -hmm. Mute myself. Okay. So this is the root cause uh, conversation. Root cause. Okay, I posted it on my also on okay. my um okay and we looks like we have some live viewers. Again, my apologies you all for um the tech difficulties. Look, it's already 13 minutes into our time and um unfortunately we said nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> well so, Matt, it's, it's, it's this one's pretty easy. I mean, we've been, that's the whole point of this, having these conversations is to simplify nutrition, teaching people how to eat and, and solve these, these so-called riddles and, and problems that are, are so prevalent. So we can, I mean, look, we, can, we don't even need to do this ever again, right? We can just sum this up in like 10 minutes, tell people what to eat real quick and get rid of symptoms, prevent disease, and we're good. People, people should have it down pat, right? Uh, well, that would be nice. <laughs> However, we cannot deny the fact that's a lot of confusion Definitely. when it comes to the nutrition world, the nutrition science, and m m to be honest to what to do. It's not yeah. only that we're confused about the news we see, but what one should do if they really, really want to heal uh, and uh, lose weight and have energy and use a food and lifestyle approach, not drug or diet quick yeah. fixes, right? So yeah, what, what, I, what I find so confusing, because I was on another conversation with, uh, I get in these conversations sometimes with vegans and I'm, I'm, I'm learning that you can't change anybody's mind, right? You just can't. There's no, they know what they know and I know what I know and I feel like I'm right. And of course they, they're very passionate and feel like they're right as well. And I had one yesterday literally say that, that what I was saying was fake news. She said, hashtag fake news. Mm. She sent a link, she put a link to Game Changer movie. And I said, mm. listen, that movie's, you know, uh, as well as Cowspiracy and Forks Over Knives and all these mm -hmm. other kind of movies are fairly, you know, very propaganda-like. And, um, and 
she proceeded to say that the stuff I was saying was, wasn't science and was fake news. Mm -hmm. And I've had other people say, I've given videos on with MDs and PhDs and I've shown studies from medical journals and peer reviewed articles. And they always say the same thing. Oh, that person's uh, not a real doctor or, or it's that it's, that person's just a researcher. They're not a medical doctor. They don't know anything about nutrition. And, and, so, and, I, and I see what they're saying, right? Because I can, I can read an article by a Harvard uh, doctor that's saying that meat is causing heart disease and causing cancer and cholesterol is bad, saturated fat's bad. And they believe that because it's coming from a Harvard <laughs> right. professor. Right. And it's, I'll it's go consider a reputable source. Yeah. Right. And then I'll say, well, that's an epidemiological study. And it was based off a survey. Most all nutrition data and studies are all are based off of epidemiological studies. And maybe you can explain to the, to the people watching this what that is. But people are going to believe what they're going to believe because I can find evidence for my argument. And they can definitely find evidence for their argument too. It's like, right. what do you want to believe? That's what's so confusing. So I feel like um, you and and uh, I, um, rather than going this rabbit hole where we try to say who's right and who's wrong, you know, who should we listen to? What what we can do is to present information that's rather fundamental not based on recent observational studies or uh, like you're saying epidemiological or rat studies or whatever studies but rather something that is pretty well established uh, that's why i call it is fundamental so we go ba back to basics to the foundation and also invite people to use logical thinking um, rather than again because we can go from one direction to the yeah. other one and just leave everybody still confused and unable to take actions right. and today's conversation I called it the root cause of all diseases because it really truly there is one common denominating factor um, in all chronic degenerative diseases which i often refer to as the diseases of domestication and from my conversation with other uh, women out there it seems like people do not necessarily understand this concept of domestication I think for me it comes pretty easy because I have a veterinary background and I study animals and I understand the difference between a wild animal and a domesticated animal. So it's, it's almost easy for me to extrapolate that information and to see us humans as another species of animals that right. now yeah. we became domesticated, yeah. just like the, right. the domesticated dog and cat and horse and and cow right at one point we had the wild dog and the wild horse and even now we have wild horses and what do we do if we want to ride the wild horse we have to break the horse that's how it's called right that horse doesn't want to be ridden by a man he wants to be free and go do whatever the heck he wants but us we go and we break in the horse so the horse becomes subdued and follows instructions and does a service to us well, I see us humans on the 21st century, like that horse that once was wild and then was broken too. So now we are all following something. We were broken into something willingly or unwillingly. That's where we are. And programmed. We're, we're programmed. Right. And I don't think we can change that, but it helps if we are able to see that we have a choice in how we live our life what food choices what what we choose again we have a choice in what we choose it's kind of like i don't know a crazy way of saying it but you 
and I and everybody watching us today uh, understand that you have a choice in everything you do from food and beverages and, and exercise and sleeping and medications and anything else you, you do, you have a choice over that. Yeah. So today I wanted to talk about this one root cause, how we get sick. What is the common denominator of, to all of these diseases of domestication, of modern living? And what is here? You want to list them, Matt? Or well, oh, well listen, I, I, let me just back up a second because I think what you said, I love the simplicity of what you say and how you, how you go to the, like if you think about, about a wild dog, right? And if you think about a, my, I have a French bulldog, right? I mean, uh, dogs are the closest ancestor to a dog is a wolf, right? I mean, and, and you, a cat, you know, it'd be, you know, probably a tiger or a panther, but like a cat is a domesticated pet or an animal. And so is a dog. And, but their digestive system is that of a wolf, right? They're pure carnivores or, or maybe opportunist uh, uh, omnivores. When you feed a dog, they're carnivores. When you feed, when you feed a dog, uh, dog human, food, human, human <laughs> dog food, food. You know, or, or just processed dog food or traditional dog food what do you get you find dogs and animals that get human diseases type 2 diabetes cancer uh, thyroid problems thyroid problems it's pretty interesting Obesity, right yeah. and it's the same thing with joint with problems beings. everything we see same thing with human beings and that's kind of the way I, I i look at it like you too is the our domestication uh has taken us away from eating from the land, right? Agriculture and, and, and hunter gatherers. And when you, when you get away from that, what we arguably, I don't know how, why we have to, why there's any argument on this, right? That's what's so funny about this. Cause some people will say we're fruitarians and, and maybe we, we started off that way. You know, and the argument I made the other day was the ground, here's a picture of the winter, the ground's frozen. There's no vegetation. There's no grains, there's no broccoli to eat, there's no kale, no asparagus, there's no carrots. You know, what are you gonna eat? Like you're gonna eat what you kill, right? You're gonna eat animals, which which is, you know, um, you know, if we had ice ages and we had you know, uh, cyclical weather where depend you know, seasonal weather, whether when the ground is frozen and it's cold, then you eat what's what you're what's what's available to you, and it's gonna be something you hunt most likely. And now you see Americans, and this is where we're getting to the root cause, right? You see the obesity epidemic and you see heart disease and, and cancer and, and diabetes. And it is directly, you know, people will say, oh, I have a genetic background or I have a genetic family hereditary or a family history of heart disease or cancer or these things. But I'd love to talk with you about that. I mean, I definitely think learn behaviors it's more learn behaviors passed down from grandmother to mother from mother to you so your your eating habits have been our learned behaviors passed down and it's not necessarily a genetic link it's a it's a um a learned habit that you continue to to pass down to to your kids and um turns into the same problems arising but not from hereditary but from food choices Right, that's the concept of epigenetics, right? The, the genes are there, we inherit what we inherit, but uh, the environment, what, what stimulates the gene uh, is more of a determining factor to what we experience, whether we, we uh, develop a disease or not. It's based on our choices, again, food and lifestyle choices. So... Um, I don't want to go in circles because we are, we are going in, in all sorts of directions. Today, I really wanted to, to talk about this common, common factor in all diseases. And I even created a nice diagram to share. And it has been said by Hippocrates, whatever many thousand years ago when Hippocrates um, lived and share his wisdom with, with people around him. He said, all diseases begin in the gut. 
And no matter how much I try to go away and find another reason for why we are getting sick the way we are today, I always land into the same statement and the same uh, conclusion that all diseases indeed do begin in our gut. And I want to explain, explain and explore that as a possibility. Because we know we have thyroid specialists. You know, everybody says, oh, you have thyroid problem. We need to balance your thyroid hormones. We need to balance your female hormones, your male hormones. Is your adrenals? Oh, no, is uh, metabolic, is heart, is brain. Everybody um, specializes in some area of our physical body, saying that that's what you need to fix. And that then you'll, you'll, uh, be healed or whatever the the assumption is out there and uh, although those like the thyroid disease or the diabetes or the cardiovascular or the depression or the arthritis or the allergies the asthma the autoimmunity all those are diseases that seem to have nothing in common believe it or not they all spring from the gut so would you do you like the saying uh it's not what you eat it's what you absorb so my my understanding is and maybe i should uh, share my screen for this is you are what you eat digest absorb and store yeah it goes to the quality of the food the state of our gut health what we are able to digest from what we eat mm. and absorb into our bloodstream to nourish the organs and then what we store that that moves into the metabolic health so, so how, that, healthy, how healthy is that gut terrain exactly because you get to be on the healthiest so, diet knowing the man and that the gut terrain is not able to assimilate and digest and absorb that in in your opinion you're not going to be able to so Take I'm going to open this image here. Let me know nice. if you can see it. Can you see it? Yeah. So this visual, I'm, I'm a very visual person and creative person. In fact, I use a lot of creativity, not like computer creativity, but pen to paper creativity in my work with my clients because it opens up the mind and it allows us to clear unnecessary thoughts and see deep inside what is going on, get to the root cause. So this image I create to illustrate exactly what I was saying, that uh, we are what we eat, absorb, and store. And the root of our health is in the state of our gut. So we eat food. I don't know. I can't see. Oh, yeah, but I'm wondering if I use the mouse. So the food we eat... It will affect, so what, actually, let me back up a little bit, because this is pretty clear, right, this image. Yeah, I think you can go to the top right there. There's maybe a pin or something. You might be able to click up on the top. Um, no, that's to, to oh. adjust the picture. Yeah. But, so, so now let's talk about the gut. What makes a healthy gut that allows for absorption and digestion of nutrients? When we talk about that, we really, really, in humans, we talk about the state of the intestine, uh, the small intestine, not so much of the stomach, as much of the small intestine, because that's where we absorb nutrients. So what you see here, big with purple, is our large intestine, which we give a lot of power, right? Because we talk about the my microbes that live in our gut, right? And uh, we think they're very important for our health, which they are. But what really happens when it comes to digestion and absorption of nutrients is what you see here in the middle with this lighter purple, that's our small intestine. That's where we humans absorb nutrients um, as a result of enzymatically breaking down food. So let me open here one other image. This one, it's a little bit more complicated, but I'm going to move it. Can you see this? That's I can see it. you moving the, the cursor. Is it yet. showing? Is it showing or not yet? 
Not the other one, not the other image, no. Not yet. Let me close, minimize this one. Let's see if it's going to show now. Showing or not yet? There it is. No, uh, well, I, and my end doesn't show yet. Can you see this now? Correct. Yep, I can see a leaky gut inflammation. Okay, so you probably heard about leaky gut. So digestion, again, in our small intestine is very much based on the integrity of our gut lining. And our gut lining, imagine it, is, is one layer of cells that are glued together. And uh, it has a semi-permeable uh, capacity. Think of a sieve. We all understand. And uh, please, comment below and let us know if you can hear us and if you understand what I'm trying to uh, explain here. And I better hurry up because I, I get long and winded and nobody has the patience to pay attention to this. So let's... Um, go back to, to the gut. So imagine our gut lining as a sieve. So when you strain, let's say you want to strain uh, quinoa, right? Many people eat quinoa. And you know quinoa is very, very small grains. So you, if you take a pasta strainer, a col colander, right? And you want to strain quinoa through that pasta strainer, Quinoa will go through along with water, yes, into your container where you want to just separate the, the, the quinoa grain, or not the grain, the seed, from the water, yes? Does this make sense, Matt? Yeah, it does. So if you want to strain um, quinoa, you would want to use a sieve, which is very small holes, has very tiny holes, so only the water goes through and the quinoa seed will stay into the sieve, yes? Yeah. So imagine our gut lining acts like a sieve, has very tiny, tiny openings that allows the absorption from inside the gut into the bloodstream of only very small particles that are desirable in your bloodstream. When the gut lining becomes like a pasta strainer with big holes, it permits the entrance into the bloodstream of all sorts of bigger size particles that are not desirable or, or um, yeah, desirable in our bloodstream and right. therefore they trigger an immune response. Right, permeability, so the, I, I like what you said, permitting or permeability. It's, it's hyper permeability. So our gut lining is semi-permeable, like a sieve. Yes. When it becomes hyper permeable like a pasta strainer it allows the flow free flow almost free flow into the bloodstream of undesirable particles so let me back it up a little bit so when we have a healthy gut lining that acts like a sieve we are able to absorb from the gut the nutrients that we the food we eat provides into the bloodstream and we hope that we eat good, nourishing food that provides nutrients for our whole system, for every cell of our body, for our thyroid, for our brain, for our joints, for our liver, for our hair, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that means good nourishment. So when you hear about food as nourishment, that's what you imagine, eating good nourishing foods and having a good healthy gut that allows you to absorb those nutrients so you are healthy from the inside out and even if you have a genetic weaker link given that you eat healthy and you have a healthy gut that genetic weak link cannot manifest itself show itself in your life now the opposite of that is leaky gut this porous gut that allows the entrance into the bloodstream of all sorts of things that do not belong into the bloodstream first thing in this progression of of the, uh, this model of disease progression that originates from the gut is malnourishment when the gut is not able to properly digest and allow you to absorb nutrients, you will not have the, the right substrate to 
um, to, to nourish your organs and tissues. So over time, you begin to see hair is falling, nails are breaking. You start to have difficulties remembering things. Your joints are aching. Oh, maybe you have hypothyroid you are told you have hypothyroidism or any other disease many of the diseases whether it's the, the way we look and feel on our physical body or is something going wrong with an organ are to some degree the result of malnourishment not simply not getting not absorbing the nutrients that we need to build ourselves to replenish ourselves so that's one step the second step is accumulation of toxins. And again, toxins enter in our blood, in our body, various ways, through the air we bleed, the food we eat, the, the um, what's the other one, the beverages we drink, plus the toxins that are originated from our own gut by having bad microbes in our gut, like I explained previously in that larger side of our intestine. So any way we look at it, we live in a much more toxic world today. We are exposed to more toxins and they also contribute along with the malnourishment to manifestations of disease in our physical body. Yeah, add, add stress and poor quality food. Stress, food. exactly. Yeah. Medication, et cetera, et cetera. So, so now we not only have malnourished, I don't know, thyroid or scalp where we lose our hair or pancreas or whatever any other organ in there but the the one organ that's probably the most susceptible to malnourishment is our immune system our immune system is right there next to our gut a, the, a big chunk of our immune system right so so two things happen here and i put them um uh, so I have the first arrow, it, which describes the malnour uh, malabsorption of nutrients, right? Which leads to malnourished tissues and organs. The second one says, we begin to, from the leaky gut or porous gut, we begin to assimilate toxins from food, beverages, um, microbes, drugs, parasites, anything, again, because we have big holes. And what do they do? Well, imagine you end up in with a lot of stuff in your blood that does not belong there. So your immune system's job is to protect you from such right. stuff. Yeah. So you trigger immune responses over and over again. So you solicit um, action from your immune system, which right now, by this point, it's slightly malnourished. Because right. this is a, a continuum of things. It doesn't happen overnight. So the more you uh, foster this unhealthy gut environment where the gut becomes leaky and porous, the, the less nutrients you absorb, the more malnourished and malfunctioning all your organs become, including the immune system. But immune system even more because it, it's permanently triggered, not only by the, the, you know, the virus that um, flies around, but from your inner environment and from the very food you eat at least three times a day, most people, yeah. right? So that triggers immune response. One other thing that happens on, in this context of leaky, porous gut, because we do not have the right, we don't eat the right foods, first of all, that we, we have the di uh, enzymatic digestion or power to break down uh, we literally, and, and in the context of big holes in our gut, we begin to absorb into our bloodstream undigested or partially digested molecules of food. So now we don't no longer absorb a single uh, glue, um, sugar, like monosaccharides in our blood. We no longer absorb just one amino acid at a time, but we do absorb chunks of it, bigger sections. Our gut, uh, is meant to not allow the passage into the bloodstream of big molecules. But now, because it's leaky and porous, you are able to absorb 
un, the, imagine like undigested molecules of food. And maybe your broccoli and your cauliflower and your chicken or egg or any food that enters in your bloodstream through a big hole that's not ready to pass through, but it gets there because that's the state of your gut. What we will do? It will be recognized by your immune system as danger. Right. So it will trigger immune yeah. response. Right. So now look what we have. From this state of leaky porous gut, we get malnourished, overly toxic, and we trigger immune responses, inflammation from the gut. That's like a stream ongoing all the time. So the, the next progression of things from here, from this, this overworked, malnourished immune system is autoimmunity. So now, and, and cancer. Yeah. So I know it sounds like crazy and I hope I was able to explain it to, you know, to bring it as down to as simple as possible and visual, but this is where your Hashimoto's originates in and your rheumatoid arthritis and your diabetes and your cancer and your anxiety and your eczema and your allergy to dust or, or pollen or nuts or whatever it is. Anything, pretty much anything that is of chronic disease in nature originates in the state of your gut. Your gut is unhealthy, it's leaky, it's porous, and the inflammation that is going on in your body as a result of that gut lining. So what would you tell someone that's dealing with eczema or psoriasis or hypothyroid or you know irritable bowel syndrome or rheumatoid arthritis? These are very common. It seems like autoimmunity is rampant. I mean, every, everyone's got arthritis and every female I know has a uh, slow a slow thyroid right so, uh, uh, hypothyroid is quite often and and, and actually uh, hashimotos which is the autoimmune um, hypothyroid uh it's it's quite prevalent as well not everybody yeah. gets to be diagnosed but and now uh, you have people getting their thyroids removed right i mean i don't know if it happens as much as it used to but it does happen yeah. so what's the solution you're saying yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're I, the I gut <laughs> Is like, there one? Is so, there what, what? What would you say the bang for the buck uh, remedy so to the, kind of that permeability to lessen? Yes, that that's, that's it. That's it. So that's the. So any. So just keep in mind, and please comment below and let us know if this makes sense. What questions are showing up? If you have any ahas, I don't know, Matt. If you see anybody commenting, because I'm not on. Um, yeah on Facebook, I'm here on, on uh, Zoom. But just please remember, it doesn't have to be as complicated as people will try to convince you that it is. Even if you have five different things going on at the same time or only one, yeah. just remember, it has to do with the state of your gut. If you heal and seal that gut lining and you, you make it go from- Heal and seal. Pasta, like Heal and seal from pasta strainer to a sieve state, you are going to heal. The question is, how do you do that, right? So it's not about, oh, you first fix your thyroid or first fix your adrenals or first yeah. fix your whatever, whatever. Fix the gut. Right. If you fix the gut, in reverse, everything else is going right. to get better. It takes time. Yes, there's no quick fix. This takes time, this takes commitment, this takes belief and desire that you can heal. But this is beyond going to vitamin shop and getting some probiotics or some HCL. Right. So, so, I, I, so yeah. I, I, there is a, and I love, I love that you, what you said there, because like this is, it's not a symptom. We're, we're trying to fix each symptom we have here. Like this can, just by healing and sealing your gut can help with a, all of your symptoms, right? Because we're trying yes. to get to the root cause. Yes, that's it. That's the root cause. So gut 
and from there inflammation, systemic inflammation. The good news is, because you said, what can you do to heal and seal the gut? The good news is that whatever you do to heal and seal the gut is also going to help you get nourishing foods because the nourishing foods are healing and sealing the gut. It's also going to help you actually balance all the hormones mm -hmm. and also will help you with that storage component. You remember we said what you eat, digest, absorb, and store. It uh, spills into your metabolic health as well. I have another diagram, which I didn't pull out. Um, maybe I should as we talk. That is, is the, what does it mean to heal with foods? Because that's what we are talking about here, guys. Healing with foods. Not with supplements, not with uh, even acupuncture or anything like that. Those are all the cherry on the pie. Am I still going on? I am, right? Yeah. I wanted to, oh gosh, uh, minimize this, but I can't even know how to minimize it. Anyway, I wanted to pull out the other image. That will be for next time. So it's about the food you eat. So you, again, we, it goes back to understanding what is the nourishing food? What are the foods that humans eat and get the most nutrient with the least amount of damaging effect on your gut and by extent of your immune system? So you see how we reverse engineer everything from the gut? And for me, when I first learned this, it was pretty mind-blowing, guys, because at the time, I was vegetarian, coming from a long history of being vegan, thinking that plants were the healing food. I was on the quest to heal my gut, which in my case was manifesting primarily through constipation. Right and then bloating, and then indigestion, and then burping, and then, and then, and then, and then, anything. And just a reminder, it doesn't have to manifest with a gut symptom. Mm -hmm. Again, you may, your gut, you will think like you have the best digestion ever. You don't get acid, you don't get bloated, you don't have gas, you don't have diarrhea, you don't have constipation. Bam, you have thyroid problem. Right. Or bam, you have diabetes, or bam, you have arthritis, or eczema, or anything. Just please remember, anything that you have that's going, not going perfectly in your body originates in the state of your gut, even if you don't have gut symptoms. Right. Powerful. 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 I know. I know. I have to bring this message because I see people going in circles. Oh, I'm the hormone expert. I'm this expert. I'm that. You are one whole human being and you have a core element that makes it or breaks it. Yeah. And again, this flash, as long as we talk about the physical body, we have to think that this physical body is made of the element that makes the physical body, yeah. which come from food. I know the thoughts are super powerful, the power of the mind, never underestimate the power of the mind, but never underestimate the power of that thing that goes through your mouth. But the majority of what human beings are consuming right now are not healing and sealing the gut. No, are causing the damage to the gut line. But what, in, in your opinion, knowing our food pyramid, knowing our your neighbors and, the, and your, the, the clients that you deal with on a daily basis, what do you think are the culprits, the major culprits? And there's many, I'm sure. Yes. But there's foods that are going to contribute to the, to the leaky gut. And there's foods that are going to help the opposite, right? That are going to reverse the permeability and help, help, help have a healthier gut. What do you think is the culprit? What food groups? What, 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 are, what are your well, thoughts? First, first, we have to uh, make sure that we all decide what food is, right? So when we, the, the biggest problem is processed foods, yeah. your vegetable oils, like anything industrialized. So that's step number one, industrialized processed foods using synthetic additives, uh, preservatives, colorings, all of that. That I personally don't even consider food. So that's that. So if you are eating things that come in boxes and packages and you have to read ingredients, 
please save yourself from having to read ingredients. No one should have to read ingredients. No other animal out there has to read ingredients, weigh food, count calories, track their food in any app. I know we are intelligent and we created all this, but it doesn't mean, it doesn't have anything to do with what's serving your body in order to be healthy, have energy and thrive. You can use your mental power for all other creative, powerful things, but not to weigh and track food and apps. Yeah, just not itself. Just if if you were to keep it really simple for somebody, people are busy, man, and they have a lot going on. They have families and kids and careers. I find it. I I, I need to define, define, exactly, define real food, right? And, and, and And then show them how to shop for it. And then just in of itself, just that, just eating real food and saying nothing else can change yes. their life. Oh, big time. So, so that's first step. When you, re, you, when you no longer have to read labels. So there are very few things that will come in containers that maybe will have three ingredients. Okay, I can deal with that. Can't but the rest, that. forget yeah. it. It's all yeah. crap that makes someone's bottom line go higher and higher and higher. And you're life expectancy or health yeah. and happiness lower and lower that's right. how you have to it's about reframing what you think food it is that's right. why i i have in my cure method i have this big r that says redefine redefine right. food redefine pleasure redefine enjoyment redefine anything that needs to be redefined so it serves what you want right and we talked about this last week, we <laughs> what, what, what fuel was, like what is the prefer, preferred fuel for the human body, right? And once you right. define that, you, you, we, and like that to me is, it's, it's not debatable, right? But we, we, we talked about oh, it already. Well, to us, it's, it's not debatable because food. we are immersed. So if you're not taking in processed foods. Right. So that's step number one. So let's say you're done eating anything that comes in packages and you have to read labels except for okay olive oil coconut oil so it's one ingredient right it's non-processed good so now that you eat only whole foods things that grow in bushes or in in, under the ground or they are raised as an animal right you eat only that now it comes the phase phase two of this process what from the whole foods are potentially causing to your lack of progress because you will make some progress it's about elevating from where you are to the next level right right so that's when you start to look okay how about all these agriculture foods that are relatively new to human history okay i choose to eat vegetables and fruits everybody tells me they are good therefore i choose to eat them okay if you choose to do that Find the vegetables and fruits that go locally and seasonally and only eat those. Right. That would be your next step. Yeah. So no New Zealand and Mexico and whatever other countries, Brazil. Yeah, all yeah, right. the time you find things in the supermarket, no. Find your local fruits. Right. Only what grows in the area where you live. And that will be next elevation point. Right. Once you do that and you still, because that might be enough for you. I don't know. Right. You have to see what is for you. What, what's your cure? We're talking about helping you find your cure. Right. So if that might be enough for you. You have the health, you have the energy, you have the body you love, you feel good. Bam, you're good. You stay there. But if that's not enough, then you go to the next level. What from the foods that I'm eating, that even though they're local, even though they're whole, da da da, are still causing problems to my uh, progress. Right. They le- lead to lack of progress. And then so, we go to the ultimate elimination diet. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's what I was about to say right there. Instead of doing like an Alcat test or, bl- or a blood Oh, test yeah, I stopped test. doing those. I, yeah, I, I, that's I mean, another thing. Don't even get me started. Right. You go to practitioners that will help you get a bag of supplements so now we move from the drug model to right. the supplement model yeah. and uh, the this acupuncture and that uh, frequency and whatever whatever there are all sorts of modality which i'm not saying they're bad they are aids they will help you once you have a healthy foundation that makes right. you your body once that food is nourishing and fueling 
anything else you add will speed up the process. Yeah, yeah. But testing, again, very rarely I will do like a urine, um, organic acid urine tests or food sensitivity tests or anything like that. You really don't need that, you guys. Right. That is for people to make more money. But let, let me back up. So level <laughs> Sorry, one, I'm getting really upset about this. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know how to, how to start. It upsets me because this yeah. money can be used to buy real food. Very rare yeah. you need to go to no, do those extra right. tests. But you're the level one version, just eating real food is a, is a, is a less uh, aggressive uh, elimination diet in of itself, right? Because you're eliminating right. you the, know, gluten and stage. you're eliminating wheat, yeah. you're eliminating, right. But obviously you, when you go into to the next, next level, then because it, it gets so, tough, you start so, eliminating a lot of things that people are, are consuming. Exactly. So here's how I, I judge. This is my, the way I approach things. You can do a test that costs you five to seven hundred dollars that will tell you what not to eat and it costs you that much money and you have it on a piece of paper yeah. or you can say what the heck i'm just gonna not eat any of this do a fasting or a detox or an elimination diet and save myself the money and just do it but most people guess what they want that pretty lab report yeah they want it's like the some lab god tells them they can't have that if i suggest that nope you're not good enough because you're not making me pay for expensive lab tests that i'm i'm telling you 90 percent of the people will go for that shiny object to have that report because it, it just seems so or some kind of a scan or some kind of if you just tell people listen just don't eat anything but meat for a month <laughs> Yeah. They'll be like, oh my God, yeah. oh my God, I can't do that. Why not? What is the worst that can happen? Yeah. You have 700 extra dollars in your pocket from not doing the lab test. You're going to start feeling better, most likely. Possibly not, but at least you do the ultimate elimination diet yeah. that will give you the most answers in return without going and spending unnecessary money and time right. with labs and things like that. And, and you've chosen to, to, you know, consume something that has the least amount of uh, antibody uh, or immune response. Right. That's why I said the ultimate elimination diet. Yeah. We can talk, we can talk next time. Why is this the ultimate elimination diet? We kind of touched last week that humans right. by design are, rather carnivore than anything else. But if we are omnivore and we consume plant matter and we don't have the health we want, then we can consider eliminating all plant foods as the ultimate elimination diet, which by the way, our animal foods are our most nourishing foods. More our superhuman, human superfoods are animal foods. They provide us with all the building blocks we need without yeah. the, the uh, chemicals or the toxins or the elements that will contribute to leaky gut and trigger immune risk, unnecessary immune responses. That's right. why they are our ultimate elimination. This uh, approach is the ultimate elimination diet. So it allows the gut lining to heal and seal because there's nothing to trigger to cut holes to poke holes in your gut lining yeah. it will give you the building blocks so your immune system starts to get nourishment so your thyroid gets nourishment so your pancreas gets nourishment so there you every organ and tissue of your body will get more nourishment yeah. on the state of a healthier gut and the immune system just takes a break <gasps> yeah and i think and i think what people <laughs> what, what i what i love about this is because you're eating more protein and fat you're not, you're not you're hungry. Sa you're satiated, yes. so you're you're eating less, and, and it resolves the metabolic less. issues too. Right, the fat. Storage. Like I think fasting. Right, if I was gonna, if I was, if somebody didn't want to change their diet, right, and I could get them to just eliminate meals, just have one to two meals a day. Intermittent right? fasting. Yeah, that in of itself Powerful. is healing the gut, right? Yeah. But if you can add, take out those those harmful foods that are possibly causing. Uh, Immune Inflammation reaction. and immune. In the same, but all meat, 
it turns into a fasting element as well because you're eating less meals. Yeah, it's definitely. So that the beauty of this is not only helps heal and seal the gut, nourish the whole body, yeah. allow the immune system to rebalance, to take a break, replenish, but it also helps with that storage component. Remember we said eat, digest, absorb, and store. So the storage component is, it has to do with our metabolic health, how we save and burn energy. So when right. you reduce, eliminate one big uh, aspect of the fuel that comes from food, which is your carbohydrates, when you take this out and you rely on fat as your only source of fuel and protein as your source of nourishment, now you begin to tap into your reserves and burn excess stored right. energy on your body, aka your or body what? fat, or plus what? you're not hungry. Right. People never, because, because they're constantly processing food, they're constant, they're sugar burners, they never actually get into fat yes. storage. Yeah, that's like impossible. So that's what I wanted to share today. I hope this was you know, not too overwhelming, although it could have been. Uh, I would love to hear comments, questions, what stands out, what scares you the most, what have you tried, any of that, we would be happy to come and um, answer Yeah, guys, uh, whoever's on here still right now, I, we'd love to know what you might be dealing with. Is there yes. any, are you dealing with autoimmune, any issues, uh, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, <laughs> yep. uh, leaky, you know, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's yep. colitis, All psoriasis, of that. eczema, All hypothyroid, of that. goes on and on. Right. All of it. All of it, it, it has one source. So, so that, that's empowering to me because it's one thing that you, you address. You heal the gut. This is liberating, right? I it's think liberating. And it's super liberating. People are like, they go to this doctor for the hormones, like you said. They're going to another doctor mm -hmm. for, uh, for their skin condition. They're going to another doctor for their, their migraine headaches. All of this, all of this, what Mihaela is trying to tell you guys is just by eating real food, just starting right there with eating real food will most likely knock out the majority of the symptoms you're dealing with right now. Yep. So if any of you watching today would like to get help, my help, Matt helps, uh, Matt's help, with finding your cure, that's how I call my coaching programs, whether they are group or private, I help you find your cure, what works for you. Don't hesitate to contact us. You can comment below, you can person, and, and for the assessment form I was giving last week, I think the best way is you guys, if you message me directly and on Messenger, you send me your email, you say, I want the assessment form and uh, then I'll send it to you because otherwise if we're not friends on Facebook, I think it's difficult for me to, to uh, message you and so on. And I cannot put a, a, a form here on. Well, they should definitely be Facebook. become your friend. Yeah, friend me. Friend? We, I, I like to have friends and you do yeah, too. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You can friend me on Facebook, say, hey, I know you from the conversations you have with Matt. So I know who you are. Otherwise I will not accept uh, random, <laughs> random yeah. people, friends on Facebook. And I want the assessment form or I want to talk with you about coaching or anything like that. More than happy to, to support you beyond this point, because this I have to uh, say can feel overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be. And, and today I, I got a little bit, wrapped up because I do have, I do get upset when I see so much. It's almost like misleading people. Yeah. We all want to uh, make a living, you know, this is not our hobbies. We obviously have businesses that uh, we want to run and make money so we can pay our bills and buy food. Uh, but it doesn't have to come at your um, health or, or uh, expense unnecessary. Yeah. More time, more money it. used for... This is all about yes. simplifying, simplifying, simplifying it. You know, you're not in that rat race. Because once you go into that world and you become a, a customer or a patient, people have to realize this is a business. Medical industry is a business. And, and there's different stuff all over the place. And you can be sent on a wild goose chase and it can, be, it can ruin your life trying to figure out what's going on. And all you have to do is eat real food. 
Yep. But no doctor is going to tell you that, guys. You got to realize that. Yep. So thank you for coming live. Next week, maybe we'll address a little bit the fiber because I know we had the question last week, how about the fiber? And today yeah. I didn't get into any of that. Yeah, like, I know. I think that's a great idea. Where the fiber fits into this gut health model because definitely most people out there will say you need the fiber to feed the microbes so you stay healthy. Uh, so what's, what's the deal with fiber? Do we need the fiber to heal the gut or it's actually the opposite? So that'll be something we can address cool. on, on our Everybody's going to wonder, you know, about that, especially when you talk today about the ultimate elimination. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Diet and being meat only. Like, hey, how am I supposed to go to the bathroom? Exactly. There's no vegetables. Yeah. Well, guess what, guys? Only 27 years it took me to go to the bathroom. Yeah. That's how long it took me, but I did not give up. I found my cure. Right. And that meant no plants, no fiber. When I went zero fiber... I started to actually have bowel movements and I had been searching for 27 years. That's, yes, that's yes. why I'm talk about that next week for sure. Cause it's like no one ever questions vegetables. Yep. You, know, you'll question, you need the fiber. Really, you need the fiber, especially if you're constipated. Yeah. You'll look at, you'll look at dairy. You'll look at gluten. You'll look at wheat. You look at corn. You know, these are common, you know, yep. uh, offenders when it comes to, to, uh, food intolerances, mm -hmm. uh, but no one ever questions kale. Or, or broccoli or cauliflower, or broccoli, right? carrots or... I mean, it's just, a, it's just yeah. on this the hierarchy of health that's been put on this pedestal for so long. Blueberries, goji berries, you know, all the superfoods, like you had that post the other day. I'm like, yeah, yeah they might be superfoods. <laughs> I question if it's for us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my skeptical mind. I know, I don't want to sound like I'm um, some kind of a... <laughs> <laughs> Breath, I'm not. I just question. Yeah. I just no, question. No, people should. That's what I want people to do. I want people to question what we're telling them, you know? Yeah. Oh, question exactly. That. Yes. Question yeah. that. And, and by the way, if you found that for you, more fiber and more plants works and you have the ideal health, by all means, do not change it. It right. works for you. Right. I'm just talking about foundation in general right. what happens fundamentally yeah, maybe, yeah, there's people out there that don't need to go that extreme yep you know that's it thank you so much we are looking forward to seeing your yeah. comments i don't know if you have any comments and we'll see you next week fantastic talk about fiber bye, next week <laughs> bye bye okay so let me see how do i i forgot how do i live uh -huh, here stop live streaming